Hi everyone, welcome to another episode on Ed. So, um, I've had a few problems with it running lately, um, on and off, inconsistent really. So, the problems, it's been um, lacking, hesitating in power when you get to sort of the higher end of third and fourth gear. Um, not great. And sometimes it's fine, other times, you know, it's not. So, because this is the single point injection model, it's basically mainly controlled by sensors in the ECU. So um, I've got a number of things I'm going to have to try and do to it, just to see if I can find what the problem is. If I had one of the computers, the scanners, um, I could plug that in and it would give me an idea of what the issue is, but I don't. And um, they're a few hundred pound second hand, so maybe I will get one at some point, but not at the moment, unfortunately. So, um, more recently I've also been having, again, inconsistently idling. It's been jumping from 900 to about 2000. Again, just um, happened on and off. So, anyway, what I'm going to start with in this video, I'm going to start with a compression test on the engine. Just to see what kind of compression values I'm getting. Um, although I know there's a lot of carbon coming out the exhaust so I know it's quite rich and I know having looked at the spark plugs previously that there's a lot of carbon so I'm half expecting the compression values to be quite high but um, we'll find out. So um, that's what I'm going to do just now, I'm just going to go over a compression tester for the engine, how to do it and we'll see what the results are and I'll come back to you at the end. So. To enable us to do the compression test, basically the car needs to be up to running temperature, which it has been, it's been running for about 15-20 minutes. Also needs to have a fully charged battery <coughs> on the injection models, which is what this is here. You need to then disconnect the fuse for the fuel pump so that basically there's no, pump, uh, no fuel getting into the cylinders once it's running. So to do that I've had to remove the air filter to get behind. There's a fuse back here, should be an inline fuse, but someone's wired in a normal fuse for this. <coughs> anyway, the wire we're looking for is orange and brown, and it's just a case of disconnecting that fuse there and making sure that no fuel can get through. Disabled the fuel pump, we now need to disable the ignition system. So we do this by taking out the distributor lead. And using a cable, we're basically going to earth this to the engine block. I'm just using jump leads just to get that connected. And connect it to a good solid point on block. Like that. So we need to get the HT leads off. You can see I've numbered them here. One, two, three, four, so I know where it's going one way. And get the spark plugs out. We need to keep these in order so we know which ones for which cylinder because it might tell us a story later on. And just take the spark plugs out one by one. Right, this is where we connect up uh, this thing here. It's got a number of different set um, parts on the end that screw in. And um, this is set up for the right threads here. So we're going to start with cylinder one and work our way along, just do one at a time. Just by 
just screw this in. Make sure it's a nice tight fit. So now we just need the help of an assistant to turn the ignition over so the engine rotates two or three times and we'll be able to keep an eye on here on what the setting is. So I'll go and get my little helper and um, we'll come back and we'll get the results as they happen for each cylinder. Right, so I've got my assistant, he's going to crank it over. When he does, he needs to make sure the throttle's fully open. So push the accelerator all the way to the ground and then just turn it, like I say, till it cranks. So here's the readings here for cylinder one. Go for it. Stop, stop. So there you go for the first reading we've got 215 we'll call it on to cylinder number two you have to reset this don't forget to reset this by pressing this button here so reading number two cylinder two go for it Right, stop. So there we go, cylinder 2 is reading 225. And on to cylinder number 3. Go for it. Right, stop. So there we are there, we're looking at 235. And the last one onto cylinder number 4. Go for it, last time. Hi, right, stop. So there we go. Um, 225, that's all four done. So once you've done that, just connect everything up the same as you took it off and make sure that everything's running as it should. And um, yeah, that's how you do a compression test on a, an engine. So the, the values there are um, quite high, well, very high actually. I think normally around about 170 to 190, thereabouts is what's expected for the sort of PSI values of the engine. The good news with this is that they're not too far away in terms of what each of the cylinders are, um, but they're high, and the fact that they're high indicates that there's a carbon build-up in the in the head in the cylinders. So at some point the head's going to have to come off, and it's going to have to be cleaned and checked to see what's happening in there. Uh, so that will be covered at some point in the future, not straight away, I've got a million other things to do before that. So I also intend to look at uh, replacing a few of the sensors and checking all the vacuum hoses and pipes um, so that I can just make sure that that's all run fine and sending the computer the correct readings. Um, but I'll cover all that in um, future episodes. Yeah, that's all we're going to cover in this video, so um, I'll wrap it up there. So. Um, as always, thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!